get you to A. Example might be, I'm going to have a grocery store, and the way I'm going to get you to A is I'm going to actually make it harder for you to buy some other product. So I'm going to put A on the top shelf, and I'm going to put B on the bottom shelf. And that's going to be the way I'm going to generate this extra demand. Now it turns out that could be very good for the customer. Because once the grocery store has the ability to move customers across sellers, manufacturers of different products, the grocery store can then go to the manufacturer and say, look, you got to give me a good deal, otherwise I will switch my, all these customers over to the, uh, your competitor's product. And so it basically make, makes it look like the customer's demands are much more elastic than they really are. And the customers have very little incentive to resist that because of these indifference curves. They're willing to go along. They're willing to sort of cede decision making to the, to, the, to the grocery store who can then use that decision making power to the, all their customers' advantage. Because they're able to say, look, think about it in terms of product choice. You're sort of very, there's a bunch of people who don't care much, brand A or brand B. There's a, and, but, and, and so what the groceries, and so they don't mind getting the brand they don't want as long as they get a little bit lower price. Now, by selling many, many products in the grocery store, on an individual product basis, they're able to give you a product that's not maybe your preferred product. But you gain enough from the lower prices they're able to negotiate to actually more than compensate you for the lost variety. You're not getting the choice that you want. So that's another example of how you would apply this. And you know, if you look at like many modern retailers today, that's the game they play. They play a game where they say, look, I got this loyal group of customers. Well, I got these customers who are gonna shop in my store. I can influence what they buy. But because I can influence what they buy, they get gives me a lot of negotiating power relative to, relative to what it would be otherwise if they just got to do what they want. Because I can not just move the guys who would choose to move, I can move the guys who are close to being indifferent to moving. And by being able to move those people, I can then make the demand curve you as a upstream seller face effectively much more elastic which is in our interest as buyers. Uh, so I like to go to, I, I, I sort of want to cede that decision-making power to the company, to the grocery store, because they can use it to my advantage. If, the, if I, in other words, I'm willing to get pushed around and he can use the ability to push me around to my own advantage. Yeah. I mean, I think this is in pooling in general. There's all kinds of, I mean, you can do insurance, you can do it with, you know, corporations do this when they buy hotel rooms. I mean, they basically say, look, if I let the individual, individual executives traveling choose which hotel they get, I don't have much bargaining power because even if they got to charge me a little bit higher price, a bunch of people are still going to choose that hotel. But if I go to these same hotels and say, I'm going to give you all my business, even the guys who would choose the other hotel at the price I give you, you give me, you're going to get those guys too, or you're going to lose them if you don't give me the discount. I can negotiate a much greater discount than I could otherwise. You know, and you know, it's been around for a long time. I mean, you know, this is like why most, most, you know, fast food retailers, for example, would have Coke or Pepsi rather than Coke and Pepsi, for exactly that reason. They want to be able to go to Coke and Pepsi and say, if you don't give me the best deal, you're not just going to lose the guys who would switch, you're going to lose all those guys. And you might say, well, geez, now the, now the, the store is less attractive because they don't have the drink I want. But the point is, because that indifference curve is horizontal at that point, the gain I get from being able to negotiate that lower price could greatly outweigh the loss I get from not getting the product I want. So competition for exclusives could dominate competition within the store. Okay? So there's lots of applications of this way of looking at the world. So 
many applications exist. For example, the other one is just how well informed I expect people to be, or how open I think people should be to persuasion. I think people should be very open to persuasion. They don't have much, to, as long as I bribe them a little, they'll let me persuade them. Right? As long as I don't persuade them too, as long as I don't push them too far away from where they want to be, they're willing to cede that power to me pretty, pretty cheaply. Because they don't value being able to make that exact decision very much. So how well instituted then would you as a consultant? What? Consultant. OK. Well, I mean, I think there, for lobbying, you got to be a little careful because then you have to ask, is the, is the government representing the interest of the underlying one? Now, you can argue that bribery can be efficient in this kind of a world, that it could be, they should be open to influence because that will allow to auction these things off. You know, the question is, who's collecting the bribes, right? The problem with bribery is that you would like, what you'd like to be able to do is give the government the right, I don't know, government always scares me, but you have to give the, you, you know, because you don't, I mean, the trouble with the government is the thing that ensures that the guy's not going to do too much of this is the grocery store has to compete for my business. If they try to do too much persuasion, if they try to go to the point where they're not optimally trading off the cost to me of shifting me around, with the benefits I get from lower prices, they're going to lose out in the competition for the basket, right? That people are going to say, I'm going to go to a store that doesn't do so much persuading, but offers a little bit higher prices, and I prefer that. So again, this gets back kind of to that question we started the day with, right? Like, how do people compete? And that's one of the reasons it's efficient for the grocery store to compete on the basket, because it allows them to play all these kind of games. And these games ultimately can be in the interest of the consumers. And, you know, so, and, 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 and believe, I mean, and that's a big part of the supermarket business is influencing people's choices. And using that ability to influence people's choices as leverage against the suppliers. Uh, you know, that's a big, big thing in grocery stores too. But it's not just true in grocery stores. This is true in almost many, many wholesale supply situations. All right. Any uh, any questions? Man, we spent almost the whole class doing this. All right, go ahead. Might as well waste the rest of it. <laughs> no, we, I don't think it's a waste. It's an interesting issue. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if um, you know, upper bounds of these efficiency gains might be projected losses in some way when you have this happen. What? If, well, this is hoping to offset the dead weight loss, right? Right. So We're, Sure, exactly, exactly. And, but it's not even always, you know, what it is is, you know, you can, I guess the point here is the degree of competition is kind of not exogenous. That is, institutions can arise that affect the degree of competition. You effectively make things more competitive when that's in the interest of consumers. Sometimes make things less competitive when that's in the interest of consumers. As long as consumers kind of have the choice at the higher level, right? As long as I can choose whether to become a captive customer or not, that usually makes me better off because I get to kind of, I get to choose which market structure I want. I get to choose whether I want to go to Costco where they have very little variety and very low prices, or I can go to another store that has tons of variety but isn't able to negotiate nearly as